Hi, I'm Paul Gibson from Jenny Bees, uh, and I'd like to talk to you today about winter feeding. We're obviously indoors at the moment, and I'm just preparing some fondant to pop onto the hives tomorrow. It's towards the end of February here in the UK. There's still a fair way to go before the bees will start foraging for themselves. So I tend to buy Baker's fondant in 12 and a half kilogram slabs, and I cut it up into these takeaway tubs which I can then put on top of the hives to help the bees feed. There's a couple of things that you need to think about. And I hear so many stories about people saying that the, the hive had plenty of stores, they hefted it, they'd applied fondant, and yet the bees had died and they suspected isolation and starvation. And if you think about it, there's a, this is a hive here, 11 frames in it, and the bees may well set off in the center through the winter and they may consume the stores and move to one edge. So when you heft it, this side would still feel heavy. And when you apply fondant, you apply it to the middle. The bees in this cluster here are unlikely to leave the brood and transfer across to the, to the food and therefore would starve. So the way that I've uh, devised this is use an ordinary crown board like so which I make myself actually just out of scrap plywood but I put two holes in them so the one in the center clearly will cover the majority of the hive and then if the bees have moved to one of these sides where it's the back or the front or the left or the right or wherever then they would still be able to get the food through this hole and that would just simply sit on top of your brood box like so I then take my filled plastic pot filled with baker's fondant and apply that over the two holes. So even if the bees are clustered in this area here, the food is still right over the top of them and they can't fail to get it. If they decide for whatever reason to move to the front of the hive, I can turn the crown board like so and apply the fondant and it's still directly over the bees so they can't possibly starve. And I've found for me that's worked uh, all the time very successfully. One of the other things that you could possibly use is a clear crown board. Now this is just a clear polycarbonate sheet, which you can buy from most of the manufacturers. I think they're about five quid or something like that. And I buy them blank and then I drill two holes. I don't know if you can see those uh, in them, just the same as, in, as I do in the plywood. So the same principle applies that the plastic tub will cover the two holes. That seems to work really well. And I leave the hives like that. Uh, throughout the winter and then they come in the spring just heft them if the light I can take the roof off have a look without disturbing the bees and if they're clustered in this area here I can apply the fondant and it's right over the top of them it seems to work really well if you've got this on here and your plastic top on the top then you will obviously need a super or something to go around it before you apply your roof just because of the thickness of the plastic sat on the top of the hive however if you're into skip diving like me, you might well come across some other materials that builders quite frequently throw away. And this stuff is really good. This is Kingspan or Celatex or whatever the trade name might be. And it's just a compressed polyurethane foam that's incredibly uh, good U-value. So it's a good insulator. So if you put your crown board on there and then apply this on the top and then your roof, you don't have any voids. And I'll, all I do with these is I cut them to the size of the, of the brood box and then I cut a hole in the middle to suit my plastic pot for the fondant. And again, this can be turned around to suit wherever the bees are. I'll just show you one here that I've knocked up. So they'll look like that. And the plastic pot, so you, you would have your crown board on there, the insulation on the top and the plastic pot would go inside like so. And that seems to work incredibly well. It keeps the bees really warm. I can move the food around to wherever they're clustered. And uh, it's been a really good system for me and I find it's been very successful. So all, all I've got to do now is fill these full of fondant, take them out to the hives, and we'll go and see if anybody needs feeding. Okay, so uh, up at one of our apiaries today. This one is actually pretty exposed. It's about 750 feet above sea level. So it does get some quite harsh winter and even through the summer there's a lot of 
times where the bees don't get the opportunity to forage so this is one where we have to keep uh, our eye on the stores and things. I've brought with me pots of fondant uh, that we discussed earlier. This is uh, full now and I'm just going to check these hives see if we need to apply this anywhere. I'll let you have a look inside and see how these insulated surrounds work as well. Okay, so this is how we overwinter most of our hives. Uh, we've got the brood box here at the top and below it we, we put um, one of the full supers on. Um, so hopefully now the bees should be surrounded by their own stores. However, because this is exposed and we don't get up here very often, uh, we've also got a fondant block on the top. So I'll just crack the roof and let you have a look inside. So you can see there, this our insulation. And inside, plenty of bees, directly below the fondant, but as you can see, they've not actually started eating on this one. So we'll leave that one alone, and then we'll go and check the other ones, see how they're getting on. Okay, so this is one of our uh, nucleus colonies. The, on this particular one, it's a BS honeybee nuke, which I particularly like because they come with the, the feeder on the top, which you can change between syrup feeding and fondant feeding. So we'll just have a look inside this one, see how these guys are getting on as well. So you can see in here, they have actually started to consume probably about 50% of the fondant, uh, which we've put over the central hole uh, incidentally, when you put the syrup on, you put the plug back in and feed them with syrup uh, in the spring or whenever. So 50%, I think this should be okay for now. Come back in a couple of weeks' time just to see how they're going on with this one. This was actually quite a small colony going into winter, so... But you never can tell with them. So again, lift off the roof. So you see here, I was saying about uh, setting the fondant block slightly off centre. And that way then you can guarantee that your fondant is directly over the bees. I'll just set this off just to have a quick look. And again, I can see the bees are clustered here. So they probably would get the central hole, but they'll definitely get this other hole that I've put on that side. They're looking good, it's still cold, I'm not going to disturb them any more than that, that's fine. Okay, so these are the last two to look at for today. And then we'll go home and have a cup of tea. Just to let you have a look with me, see what these are like. And as you can see, these are actually active at the front of the hive at the moment. And it's amazing. We're maybe 20 feet lower than the others, but because we're surrounded by a couple of trees, a little bit more shelter, um, maybe that helps, who knows. And again, they're fine, but I'll just show you how I've offset the fondant. So these guys are actually quite small, and they're clustered there. And I think if the fondant had been just over the centre of the of the brood box there's possibility that they could have missed it however because it's here it's looking like they're getting onto it if they need it um, they are, i've just looked in the back corner there they have actually eaten some of it but um we'll just leave those well alone now so there we go that's pretty much uh, that's it for the inspections for today. We've added fondant where we needed to. Checked all the colonies and they're all still surviving, so that's a bonus. Um, so just to recap, really, the, the use of the insulation is, is, it saves having an extra super on there and saves a, a void of cold air surrounding your fondant. It's not like actually necessary. It's more important that you get the fondant directly over the bees uh, and that way they should reduce the chance of isolation and starvation. So I hope we've 
what you've seen today you've enjoyed uh, if so please like and subscribe there's plenty more videos uh, to come this season